The incredible thing about this opera is that it is, depending on how you look at it, all things. It is a fairy tale, uh, certainly at the beginning when you look at the dragon and these spectacular entrances of like the Queen of the Night. And then certainly in the second half of the piece, you get much more into sort of weightier themes of philosophical dogma. And so really it depends on sort of what the expectation of an audience is, what they see in the piece. And the turn that we take in this production is that we use the perspective of the three boys as proxies for the audience. We sort of guide the eye through the, the, the movement and the sort of uh, action of the boys. Uh, and then throughout the piece, the boys learn through the actions and through these like strange, fantastical departures that we have visually. They learn about compassion for others. They learn about love. They learn about growing up. They learn about the, the pressures of adulthood. It's a very intimate setting that we remain in the house. Devolvement of the reality of the boys into something unrecognizable occurs in the home. It's also, however, really interesting in the piece to realize that the Pamina figure as something of a exception is through her suffering, through her efforts, through her bravery, is allowed, much like Tamino, to accept the sort of rights of enlightenment and be welcomed into this world. So it is telling the story also of a woman succeeding, becoming accepted, or, or sort of sort of earning the right to exist in this in this man's universe. And that's also an extremely, extremely important part of, of our reading of it.